Our hearts are glad as we rejoice in the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever. Good day to you, friends. Let me give you a few announcements today. First of all, I have to apologize. These are very difficult times uh, in the life of the church. Uh, and, and this Sunday, I was actually thinking, or for this week, I was actually thinking about the 4th of July and the tentative reopening of Eastside Church in August rather than the, the fact that this is the first Sunday of the month uh, and normally we would have communion and we've done that for a couple of months but I didn't pre pre prepare communion it only occurred to me as I was kind of finishing my sermon you'll probably figure that out when you hear it and rather than trying to squeeze it in today and not being very well prepared I'll plan it for next week a few other announcements. Uh, food collection for the local food bank will be Monday, July 6th, this Monday coming uh, from 10 to 11 a.m. And to, I want to say thank you for all the donations and all your support for, for those, that purpose, for all the purposes that we have been collecting for. Uh, another announcement, we've received some good news that Joanne Schubert uh, we'll be leaving the Ashtabula County Nursing Home on Tuesday and be going back to her own home, I guess. And, uh, and uh, her daughter, Debbie, will be uh, trying to get things kind of going for her again there. And, and we hope that everything will, will go fine for her. Please remember in your prayer, send her a card if you would like, please. Um, and in that vein, let us remember all our residents who are in the hospital or nursing homes. All those who have stayed in quarantine in their own homes for all these months. And lastly, uh, just to mention the hymns today, being the 4th of July weekend, a God of the ages whose almighty hand, da, 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 be so much better with the organ or with music on a trumpet and all that kind of thing. Uh, and the other one is lift every voice and sing, lift every voice and sing. Try to sing that one a little faster than maybe than usual, since, uh, but that one also sounds much better with accompaniment. So those are the hymns today, plus God be with you till we meet again. Now we will move on to our call to worship. Please join me in this responsive call to worship. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Here in this place of worship, we stand in awe over God's steadfast love. Your name, O God, like your praise, reaches to the ends of the earth. Let the whole, wo whole world rejoice because of your righteous judgments. Pass on the message of God's greatness wherever you go, so that generation to generation will know that this is our God who will guide us forever. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do also for him. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn, as I announced, is God of the Ages, whose almighty hand. God of the ages, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the skies. Our grateful songs before thy throne arise. Thy love divine hath led us in the past. In this free land with thee our lot is cast. Be thou our ruler, guardian, guide, and stay. 
Thy word, our law, thy paths, our chosen way. From war's alarms, from deadly pestilence, be thy strong arm our ever sure defense. Thy true religion in our hearts increase. Thy bounteous goodness nourish us in peace. Refresh thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to never-ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine and glory, Lord, and praise be ever thine. I don't know what happened there, folks. I just couldn't get the end of that, end of those verses. I should have put the music in front of me. I apologize. We got there, however. Our scripture today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Today we're reading in the 11th chapter, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. 16, verses 16 through 19 and verses 25 through 30. From the New International Version today. Listen to the Word of God. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others, We played the pipe for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. At that same time, Jesus said, I praise you, Lord, Father of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this, this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Father except the Son. No one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. For me, this is a difficult Sunday to preach. If suddenly it may be, for all I know, it may get to be too much for me, and I may just say amen and we'll move on. I just can't be sure what may happen. The church, if it is truly the church of Jesus Christ, cannot simply be a cheerleader that sees only the great things and the good things of the United States of America. We have to be aware and speak to those times and places where the nation has come up short. I think it was Martin Luther who said that preaching should afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. And many have said, including myself, so it's not original with me, that the first person that a preacher preaches to is himself or herself. So here we go. We have spent this weekend this we have spent this weekend celebrating the Declaration of Independence of the thirteen colonies from the nation of Great Britain in 1776. We remember that God is invoked in the Declaration as Creator. All men 
we would say all people in this day and age. All men, all people are created equal and endowed, that is, provided with certain rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But in the words of that great old prayer of confession of sin, we have followed too much and too often the devices and desires of our own hearts rather than the things that would help make this nation truly a great nation in all respects. In some, in some ways I think we would rather look into the dark skies and watch the celebratory fireworks explode rather than look around us and see all the peace, people and places that are not able to or do not feel sufficiently free to celebrate. At this point we must change text from the Declaration of Independence and read from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And we must necessarily recognize how we generation after generation have come up short not just to the words of the Declaration of Independence but especially to Jesus' words. This generation and each generation all before and all that will follow must strive and must recognize our shortcomings We have not always recognized. We have always not always known when we should dance and when we should mourn. We have at times done better and done worse at the task of create, creating one nation under God. We have perhaps mourned when we should have celebrated and celebrated when we should have mourned. And sometimes I think that Jesus reminds us that we need to remember that our ultimate faithfulness, our ultimate loyalty must, re must reside in God. We talked about that a little bit last week, talking about the idea of family. God's ways can be both too little and too much for us. God's agenda can somehow be at one and the same time too conservative and too liberal we're not terribly excited by John the Baptist living in the desert, eating insects and wearing itchy clothes and requiring us to choose this day in his attitude. But neither are we always open to Jesus, eat and drink with everyone, welcome to the party attitude. We often, we often focus in this nation on those who have achieved much, those who by hard work, talent, skill, even sometimes by being in the right place at the right time have been successful in the fields of endeavor and in their lives. But we often ignore that faith and the knowledge of God are not things that we can achieve but are gifts from God. And there are often those who are poor according to the things of the world who are rich in the eyes of God. Perhaps one of the best things we might do on this Independence Day weekend is recognize our dependence, our dependence on God and on each other, especially those lowly and often overlooked. Jesus' words in today's lesson, Jesus' closing words in today's lesson. Come to me, he says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These words are often spoken at communion and at funerals, two occasions where we must, where especially we recognize our need for God and for each other.
Perhaps we need these words printed someplace where we can always see them, rather than simply recalling them occasionally. To remind us that God reaches out for all who are weary and burdened and offers rest to them. We're not talking about weary and burdened after a hard day of work, but weary and burdened after the shortness, after, after feeling the short end of everything. And that yoke, that yoke that Christ offers is not something that is a burden, that is painful to carry. but something that will give us rest and ease, knowing that he has worn it for us. Let us in our lives recognize, especially on this weekend, when we're meant to celebrate as a nation, those that we need to include, those who have felt excluded, those who have separated themselves for one reason or another, that are important to the full body of this nation, just as we need to include and welcome all those who would be part of the full body of Christ. Amen. Our next, our next hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing. I'm going to use the hymn book for this a little bit to helps me helps me get the notes. Mm -hmm. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place which for our people sighed. We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the bright beam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, those who have brought us thus far on the way, thou who have by thy might led us into the light, Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray, stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. 
shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. Now, friends, I ask you to join me in reciting what we believe, remembering what our, what our, where our faith in God lies. Let us join in reciting together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended, ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, friends, let us bow our heads together in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, by whose goodness we have been strengthened in time of national weakness, and by whose wisdom we have been guided in the midst of confusion, we are grateful for your faithfulness. Except for your sustaining care and correcting presence, we should not have endured. We therefore admit our dependence upon you and recognize your marvelous dependability toward us. By your goodness, O oh God, you led people to these shores and to this continent endowed with such incredible natural resources, the treasures of mines, the fertility of fields, the adequacy of rivers and lakes, the abundance of forests, and the temperate climate have made the good and full physical life possible here. We thank you also for the beauty of plains and plateaus, of mountains and oceans, of deserts and lakes that create for us such a scene of wonder as our environment for living. Lord of all people, we bless you that you have set our lives in such pleasant surroundings. We confess, our Father, that we sometimes pride with pridefully forget that you brought here men and women from every race and nation. Remind us that not all of our ancestors came here of their own will, nor were all led by the highest motives. Yet you have so worked through and beyond the willfulness and disunity of diverse peoples to make us a nation united and vigorous. Lord, in this time we remember especially to pray for those of our family, those of our friends who need your presence and your help. Especially, Lord, we lift up to you Joanne Schubert and give you thanks for her, her healing and for her good health as she, as she has recovered from her illness. We thank you for, we think of friends and family. We're seeking help for illnesses and for those in nursing homes and hospitals and at home, at home in quarantine. Lord, we thank you also for the opportunities to serve, for the ways that you have, have helped us to know what is needful of our, of our neighbors and those who are in need. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the help that we receive in those times as well. Lord, we lift up our friends and neighbors, our family, as we hold them before you and we see them in our mind's eyes. Bless each one, care for them, guide them and love them as you have guided and loved and cared for us. We thank you, God, for making us what we are for good. Take away our boastfulness that celebrates our own accomplishments and make us humble enough to celebrate what you have accomplished in this great land. Make us humble enough to wait on you and be obedient to your guiding. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, your servant, our Lord. Amen. 
Now I would like to take just a brief moment to say thank you for all your contributions for the church and also those for, for the contributions for, our, for the food banks that we have been collecting and also for other projects that you may have supported uh, in these weeks and months since we have been together again. All of it does a great deal of work. All of it is used and stretched as absolutely as far as it can all go. And so every part of it is a blessing, not just for us, but for others. Now let us bow our heads and offer this prayer. God of justice and love, your way commands our obedience. We can do nothing apart from the blessings you bestow. We offer our lives and our gifts to you. We pray that the work of your church may be enlarged, enriched, and strengthened as it seeks to do your will and to show compassion, justice, and mercy in our world of need. Accept what we offer and multiply its effectiveness, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is God Be With You Till We Meet Again. God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels guide uphold you. With a shepherd's care and fold you, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Unseen wings protecting hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening wave before you. God be with you till we meet again. And now hear the charge and benediction which reminds you of God's presence and God's, God's strength for this coming week. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. There, He has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you wherever you are. Go into the world secure in the knowledge of God's mercy, filled with the joy and peace of Jesus Christ, and energized with the passion of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you, friends. I'm glad you were able to be here today. God bless.